Are you still excited by this? Because that means you didn't see the last movie. Opening text crawl continues to bore and delight everyone. More talk about the Senate. The next thing you know, this franchise is going to turn into the Manchurian Candidate, which is a great movie when it's not called Star Wars. The third paragraph of this crawl is about the exciting action of voting. Discount CGI Cloud City. There was no danger at all. The bomb was time to explode at the moment of jinxing. I failed you, Senator. Well, you blew up instead of her, so I'd say that's pretty successful. Senator Amidala, please. How does one go from queen to senator? Do you have to renounce your bloodline's claim to the throne? Is senator actually a higher office than queen to this society? I am so confused. We're keepers of the peace, not soldiers. Um, did the Jedi luck out with sporadic uprisings until this moment in time? How do they keep the peace with so few of them if there aren't enough to go to war? That's like having a National Guard based in Nebraska with 15 people in it who can go to Florida if need be, but are powerless if anything happens later in Texas. Mm, the dark side clouds everything. Let's just go ahead and say it, Yoda is useless as a prophet. Also, how does Palpatine have such amazing control of the dark side of the Force that none of these Jedi can sense it three feet away? Impossible to see. The future is. And yet future prophecy bullshit will drive everything we do from here on. Desktop hologram. I think the Count Dooku was behind it. Well, then, if you say so. The Count Dooku was once a Jedi. He couldn't assassinate anyone. It's not in his character. Did these assholes never once run into a Jedi who went to the dark side? Why does everyone fret about training someone like Anakin if that's the case? Sure, Darth Maul said something about revealing ourselves to the Jedi, but I thought he was implying they'd been gone a long time, not that they never existed. He's just returned from a border dispute on Anteon. He and Anakin were able to take care of that border dispute all by themselves. Not only amazing, but not filmed to show us how that works. I haven't felt you this tense since, since we fell into that nest of gumdocks. That sounds exciting. Let's watch that instead of this. Obi? Obi! Just like a phone that constantly rings, Jar Jar enters the picture to jangle your nerves. Annie? My goodness, you've grown. But you haven't. Hell, you guys are the same age now. And he'll always be that little boy I knew on tattooing. So let's have kids together. I hit the ship, but they used a decoy. Why did you wait until the ship was deboarding to hit it? We'll have to try something more subtle this time, Sam. Why? Uh, she covered the cameras. I don't think she liked me watching her. Yeah, would anybody? Especially someone who basically led Dick first during the introductions a minute ago. You're using her as bait. Why not use another decoy? Why not dress and drag in her bedroom while she sleeps on a nondescript floor of this building? Besides, your senses aren't that attuned to my young apprentice. And yours are. Just how much bag talk has Obi-Wan put up with from this little shit throughout the years? Because I'm betting it's way too much. Just being around her again is... intoxicating. Good god, man. Anakin is already out of control. The guy needs to bang a hooker fast. You've made a commitment to the Jedi Order, a commitment not easily broken. And which doesn't allow for the power of boners. If they know the exact floor and exact room Padme is sleeping in, why didn't they just program this thing to fire missiles into the room? Yeah, yeah, the assassins felt like they needed to be more subtle, but do you think people wouldn't be able to figure out this was foul play? The Chancellor doesn't appear to be corrupt. <laughs> now here's something extremely weird. Obi-Wan jumps and crashes through the window like a dick, through blinds and what is probably some tough-ass glass, even if it has a small hole in it. It's amazing it doesn't fall to his death right here. This is something unbecoming of his character, and something Anakin might more likely do since he's a hormone-based horned dog of a Jedi right now. Also, Obi-Wan jumps out of a window to grab onto a probe sent to kill Padme, because he thinks the probe will lead him to the person controlling it? He thinks he can interrogate the probe? WHO SENT YOU, PROBE?! You'd also think a subtle device like this might have a self-destruct button in order to evade evidence and capture, but we. Luckily for Obi-Wan, this murder probe is programmed to return to its owner after a failed murder attempt. I've got a gun that can fire with utmost accuracy, but I'll shoot the probe and let gravity decide this. Whoa, wait, what's that? Is that my falling master in the middle of all this craziness? Ex machina to the rescue! This is the equivalent of thinking that if you jump at the last minute in a falling elevator, you'll be safe. There he is. Obi-Wan finds the assassin, because I guess every question is answered with the Force. But even with that, the assassin decided to fly in the general direction of Obi-Wan's fall just a second ago, even though she was way up high earlier. Jeez, how do they survive this sh the answer is just because. Phew, glad that's over. Time to take off my mask for virtually no reason. Wait. I hate it when he does that. You did the exact same thing a minute ago. Do you remember crashing through the glass after a fucking flying probe? Here's the problem. If you're going to explain he survives these things and somehow knows where Zam's ship is just because of the force, you're gonna have to do a better job of relaying that message. This is some serious bullshit right here. Anakin doesn't pull out his lightsaber and infiltrate or crash this speeder instantly. What? Once Anakin does use his lightsaber, he's terrifically bad at killing speeder pilots with it. 
This is more unbelievable than Harry finding Peter in the World Unity Festival crowd in Spider-Man, the stupid kid finding Spider-Man's mask in Spider-Man 2, and Peter Parker finding his engagement ring while falling off a building in Spider-Man 3. Also, Obi-Wan conveniently catches Anakin's lightsaber, but then sets it on the passenger seat without care, almost ensuring it will go airborne or otherwise missing during the ensuing aerial chase. Also, I thought Anakin wanted to see where the ship went, where the assassin went, and who she's working for. Instead, he just went right back to let's kill this asshole and doesn't seem the least bit concerned about the other knowledge. This weapon is your life. It really isn't. You can make more. And there are alternatives to fighting as we learn from somebody else in the earlier trilogy. I forget who. Why do I get the feeling you're going to be the death of me? Not hilarious, overly manipulated foreshadowing. You wanna buy some death sticks? What a creative name for a thing. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. This is the only time Jedi mind tricks ever work. Once with a stormtrooper in the first movie and with this drug dealer in the fifth movie. Also, during this entire chase, no one is standing at the door to make sure the assassin doesn't walk out. Obi-Wan is drinking, definitely something a fucking Jedi does when hunting somebody down. <laughs> oh, now I know why Obi-Wan is drinking, so that there's a callback to the original Star Wars in the Mos Eisley Cantina, and so George Lucas can find an excuse to cut off another limb. Also, why didn't she just shift into her other self for a disguise and simply walk out? Tell us now! They don't even try to Jedi mind trick Zam. They just go the old-fashioned Batman and or Jack Bauer route. It was a bounty hunter called... There's no chance in hell Django knew where anyone was and what time they'd be here. Just go right to hell with that <laughs> By the way, he had no problem jumping after probes and defying death and traffic a minute ago to find Zam. But this Django dude, ah, we'll just wait here and hope the dying changeling can tell us some stuff. Toxic dart. It'll probably be the only good shot this guy ever gets off during these movies. What about Senator Amidala? She will still need protecting. Handle that. Your Padawan will. I sensed he cared deeply about his mother and didn't want to train him because of that earlier. But now I can't sense this horny teenager's desire and will make him the primary guard for Amidala. Everything here would look beautiful if it didn't look fake as shit. The boy has exceptional skills. But he still has much to learn, Master. Somehow, between the last movie and this one, Obi-Wan and the Jedi Council have completely reversed their roles on the idea of Anakin as a Jedi. Too sure of themselves they are. Maybe it's that constant fear leads to the dark side tripe you've been preaching this whole time that makes them more confident than they should be. The prophecy is true. Your apprentice is the only one who can bring the Force back into balance. Yeah, about this prophecy. Is there some sort of turmoil going on where the Jedi need the Force to come back into balance? If so, what does Anakin need to do to bring about that balance? Exist? There's absolutely no explanation for this, and it feels like it was put in the script just to sound good. It will be your responsibility to take my place in the Senate. Representative Binks? Hmm? Well, he certainly is qualified. I haven't worked for a year to defeat the Military Creation Act, to not be here when its fate is decided. Amidala's exposition is as clunky as the opening crawl, which already talked about this vote for which she wants to be present. Funny how after Amidala had the run-in with the autonomous probe the previous night, she's allowed to walk around unobstructed windows to her heart's delight. He's overly critical. He never listens. Where the f*** did this come from? You were just talking about making sure she's safe, and it turned into a diatribe about how life's unfair to you. It's not fair. Padme will not only ignore this childishness, but go on to enter a sexual relationship with this whiny baby. Please don't look at me like that. Why not? Because it feels like you want to f*** me with your lightsaber, you creepy bastard. Sorry, milady. Well, that is f***ing evil and creepy, and now I need a shower. Roseburn and Natalie Portman are not my sister wives in this scene. Don't do anything without first consulting either myself or the council. Especially f***ing this queen, you hear? I ain't seen one of these since I was prospecting on Subterrell. You saw these kinds of poison darts when you were prospecting? There's these funny little cuts on the side to give it away. Those analysis droids only focus on symbols. Oh, I mean, what? This is a library, right? And it looks like everything is digital, so why the need for large stacks of blue everywhere? Um, the official subtitles here say that R2-D2 gave that cook robot raspberries. What the f***? I'll be with the people that I love. You do not love her yet! You haven't even seen her in ten years! You have a boner! That's it! How does Jedi training not include sex ed? Attachment is forbidden. So do all the Jedi just hope that all potential Jedi in the universe are created by that Shmi Skywalker method of midi-glorian pregnancy? I'll tell you how this romance is made even more painful. It has to start with Amidala resisting Anakin for nearly the whole movie before they can start lying around in flowers and sh**. Floaty ball practice. Because someone erased it from the archive memory. Oh, come on. So let me get this straight. Just on the off chance someone was looking for this planet for whatever reason, someone decided to erase it from the archives. And why would anyone be looking for this planet? Except when someone finds a rare poison dart that only the chef at a diner could recognize. Also, they removed the planet, but they didn't remove anything else that might help someone locate it? That gives you, like, the opposite effect of what you're trying to accomplish, right? You might as well put a neon sign there that said, Planet removed for incriminating purposes. But Master Yoda, who could empty information from the archives? That's impossible, isn't it? 
Yeah, who could it be? Who has the power around here? I'm gonna blame George W. Bush until we get to the bottom of this. Apparently R2 navigates stairs one by one, very slowly, but can catch up to them no problem even though they never stop. I heard they even tried to amend the Constitution so you could stay in office. She was a queen though, right? Not an elected official. Or does this planet just elect people and call them queens? The day we stop believing democracy can work is the day we lose it. Let's pray that day never comes. You have a queen in this world, right? Isn't that a monarchy? Or are you like the British monarchy where you have a queen but she has no power? There it is, R4. Yep, the planet we've probably seen for many, many parsecs because it is a huge celestial body in space. I am just now acknowledging that I see it. You will be delighted to hear that we are on schedule. All these people need to know is that Obi-Wan is a Jedi, and they just blab the whole evil plan to him before making sure it's okay to tell him. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Never a more eloquent word was spoken in order to woo a fine woman. Here everything is soft and smooth. This line works. Also, didn't you fools just get here? Rapid romance is f***ing rapid. We take great pride in our combat education and training programs. But we don't spend much time on aiming practice. An unaltered clone for himself. Curious, isn't it? Not if you're trying to come up with the origin story of Bubba Fett, it isn't. Everything in the background of this shot is some bullshit people should be ashamed of. Movie unintentionally inspires Twilight. Do you get the sense they walked into this meadow and, like Back to the Future 2, ordered this background to show the scenery channel? We need a system where the politicians sit down. This romance and politics in the same scene. Skip. Anakin pretends to be hurt more seriously than he is. She falls for it and movie thinks that's love. Movie misses its chance to insert the lightsaber swooshing noise in this scene. No one apparently told Django that a Jedi was coming because he left his incriminating in the closet completely out in the open for anyone to see. They'll do their job well. A whole army of Django Fett's and somehow the bad guys are going to lose this thing. They're about to eat fruit with fucking silverware. From the moon. And skip. I'm haunted by the kiss that you should never have given me. Ladies and gentlemen, the f***ing poetry of George Herbert Walker Lucas. You're starting to become a Jedi? I'm... I'm a senator. Sex is impossible because senators have senator parts and Jedi have Jedi parts. We could have accepted this love story in Attack of the Clones if we could have seen Anakin doing awesome Jedi sh** throughout the movie. And Padme, despite everything in the world telling her not to, decided, you know what, f*** it, I need to go to this Jedi and break off a piece. And the story of Luke and Leia's birth gets told, without all this arguing, pleading, and terrible dialogue trying to make it so. And it would have cut about 20 minutes from the movie. Obi-Wan has to give his report while standing out in the middle of a torrential downpour. Did the Council ever authorize the creation of a clone army? Hmm, Palpatine came into power about ten years ago. The Jedi who supposedly ordered a clone army died about ten years ago. And there's only one guy who has the kind of power to do all this. So, hmm, who could it be? Blind we are. If creation of this clone army, we could not see. But instead of explaining how that's possible, we dedicated many minutes to Amidala and Anakin not having sex. In other words, these movies tell you a lot about what is happening, but don't tell you the ins and outs of why those things are. And there definitely isn't any ins and outs going on in the bedroom either. 